Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing another special request video. This one was from YouTube Studio again. This time he wants proof theorems using similarity. If you feel like you're missing out, go ahead and leave a comment requesting your own video on the specific topic that you need, and I'll do my best to make a video for you. Something else of note, check this out. I haven't had this happen in a while. My iPads actually charge at 100% for once. That's a rare occasion. Usually I'm living life dangerously. Just thought I'd point that out. Okay, now, these problems, these are proofs. So we're proving uh, theorems using similarity. These are tough problems. I usually didn't, when I was teaching geometry, I didn't assign these because it caused my students too many issues. It wasn't worth the trouble, but I can see where there's a lot of value in this. So let's go ahead and break this down. This is my first time seeing it. You guys are getting a live check from Mr. West. So let's just kind of go ahead and break this down. So we have MNO. That's this big shape here. Okay. We have that big triangle there. And it's just giving us the different measurements. So I could go through and read the whole thing, but it's just it's, uh, essentially just giving the givens of the problem. And then it's saying is a, here, they're providing a proof, and that's this part down here of the Pythagorean theorem. So they're giving us a proof, and they're asked to kind of fill, they're asking us to fill in the blanks. So the first thing, I'm just going ahead, jump right to number one. Angle NOM is congruent to OPM. All right angles are congruent. So let's identify this first. So we have NOM. Okay, so we have NOM, and that is NOM. That is that right angle right there. Okay, so that's NOM. And then we have OPM. 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 I think the O is up there, right? Let me just see. Okay, yes, it is. Okay, so then we have those two angles are congruent. Okay, both right angles. All right, so that's our first given. And then we have OMN is congruent to PMO. So we got to identify this. So we have... OMN, that's a different one, OMN, let me highlight this, this is, this is going to get messy, this is not very conducive to video, however, we'll, we'll make it work, okay, so now we have this angle, OMN, that's that green with that one single line, and saying that it's congruent to PMO, so I need to find PMO, it just shifts every time, PMO, PMO, okay, so it's just saying, uh, o, oh, shoot, I lost track of OMN. <laughs> so OMN. Okay, so look, it's OMN and PMO. It's the same angle. This is going to be reflexive property. So we're looking for a reason. This is going to be reflexive property. What is the reflexive property? Reflexive property is it's the same measurement because it's the same angle. Okay, so what it's essentially meaning is this angle right here belongs to this small triangle and at the same time, it belongs to this big triangle and it's the same angle. Therefore, it's reflexive property, okay? So that's why that's the first one. Okay, now we're rolling. MNO is similar to MOP. So now we're going to have, okay, MNO. I think that's the two big ones we were just discussing. So MNO and OMP. So we're talking about the big one and the small triangle, okay? There's a small triangle and a big triangle. There's also a medium triangle in there. But it's saying that these are similar because of angle angle. Okay, we have two angles here, and usually what you do is if you're, if you, anytime, this is why I was instructing my geometry students, anytime you're listed a congruent symbol anywhere, you should write a letter, either A or S. In this case, it's an angle and this angle, so naturally this one is going to be angle-angle similarity because of what we've already established here. Okay, so now we have A over X is equal to some ratio. So lengths of corresponding pairs of sides of similar triangles have equal ratios. Lengths of corresponding pairs of sides of similar triangles have equal ratios. That's another way to say if we know these two triangles are similar, okay? So this yellow one and this green one. If we know they're similar, then we know that, for example, the hypotenuse over this hypotenuse, over this the yellow hypotenuse, is going to be equal to the small leg over the small leg. Okay, it's going to have the same ratio. So what ratio we need to find? A over X. So A over X, let's identify the parts it is for each triangle. So here we have A is the hypotenuse for the yellow, and X is this little, uh, we'll call that the short leg. Okay, now of the of the big triangle, what does it represent? I should use a different color other than this, this green. Of the big triangle, what does it represent? Okay, so I'm going to call this the short side, okay? So now we have the big triangle. What sides are we representing here in this big triangle? Well, letter A now is the short side of the big triangle. 
And then this blue X, well, that's that's not anything, okay? That well, that that's not uh, either the short side. It doesn't really belong, okay? But luckily, it's not asking that. It's asking a over x. So a over x is again. We're gonna say for the small triangle. Let me write this out. We're kind of running low on space here. I'm gonna switch to all purple. So for the small triangle, we were comparing the hypotenuse to the short side. Okay, and we said that's equal to a over x. Now for the big triangle, we're gonna do the same thing. What's the hypotenuse? Remember, we wrote we're comparing hypotenuse to short side. So what's the hypotenuse of the big guy? That's c. The hypotenuse is c. And the short side, what is that? The short side is a. That's where we get this. Okay, so it's gonna be c over a because that is what it's equivalent to. So let's go c over a, that one. Okay, and then we have uh, multiply both sides by x and we get that formula a squared equals c times x. I think we're supposed to check it right here. We are, okay. I think it's gonna go on to part b. No, it's not. We don't even go to part b. That's disappointing. Okay, here we go, new one. Eleanor wants to prove that if a line divides two sides in a triangle proportionally, then it's parallel to the third side. Select the appropriate rephrase statement for Eleanor's proof. Oh boy. Okay. So here we go. Eleanor wants Eleanor. Eleanor wants to prove that if a line does divides two sides in a triangle proportionally, then it's parallel to the third side. Okay. This is one of those um, kind of it's kind of those obscure theorems. It's saying if it divides this proportionally. So if that Okay, if it's something like that, where uh, CE, whoops, I, w I thought I was writing, CE over AE, we'll call that. Oh, actually, no, that's not the side of the triangle. So just rewind here. I'm trying to highlight. All right, here we go. So we have... This, we have a big triangle here. First, let's identify our triangle. So we have a big triangle here. Then we have this green triangle. Okay, now we're rolling. If we have AE, which is that small side, over AC, okay, if that is proportionate, meaning to this other side, so we could say uh, divide two sides into uh, triangle proportionality. So AD over AB, Okay, those are the sides. So AB is that big side, and then AD is this side right here. Basically, I'm saying the sides of these triangles compared to each other, the small to the big. Okay, so the small obviously is on top, and I put big on the bottom, and I have the different sides. Okay, so this is like left side, and this is right side. Right. Okay, so I'm just comparing the different sides. If that is proportional, then we know that this is parallel right here, those two lines. Okay, and that is that is the theorem. So we need to see, okay, if in ABC, if ED is parallel to CB, no, it's not saying if it's parallel, it's saying it's proportionate, then it's parallel, okay? So because the, the parallel statement is second, okay, I'm gonna leave that up there. Because the parallel statement is segment, second, then we know that we're either looking at this guy or this guy, okay? So C and A are out because we're proving that the lines are parallel based on the proportionality. Now we just need to look here and see which proportion is correct. Is it AE over EC? Okay, let me go up and look real quick. AE over AC, no, EC. Okay, so that's fine too. You can also do it that way. So AE over CE, that little, so the kind of the top segment versus the bottom. So you can do the top to bottom. Okay, but it also needs to be equal to the top and bottom on the right side. So that's got to be AD over DB. So we need to see which one says AD over DB, and that is letter B. The other one says ED and CB. That's not correct. We have to do the same proportion we had in the other one, so it's option B. We're going to check it. Next question. Okay. And the following ED is parallel to CB. Okay, so now it tells us that it's parallel. We're going to reverse in the exact opposite or exact opposite direction than the previous problem. Below is a proof that EC over A, EA. There's a lot of looking at different lines here. This is super geometry, but that's okay. So EC is where EC over EA. Okay, so we're again we're doing top to bottom, which you can do top to bottom proportionality, and DB over AD, okay? So top to bottom on the right side too. So top, well actually it's putting the bottom on top, which is fine, but you, I hope you guys know what that's what I meant. That's the bottom side, 
or the bottom portion, and that's the top portion. Okay, so now let's go back over here. The proof is divided into two parts where the title of each part indicates its main purpose. Complete part A. So we're only interested in part A. AC over the thing we just looked at. So ED is parallel to CB, given. Okay, that's our given. Now, we have a congruent sign, so we're going to either put like an angle here or something. When a transversal crosses parallel lines, blank angles are congruent. Okay, so when a transversal, so we're looking at one and three here. Let me erase some stuff. We're looking at one and three. I already know what this is, but I want to highlight it to you guys. So here we have these two lines parallel, and then one and three are created because we have this transversal here. And I'm going to make it in red, this transversal. Those are corresponding angles. They're in the same part of the intersection, I like to say. If you want a brief of that, I have plenty of videos on that. But these are corresponding angles. Okay. Now, angle 2 and angle 4, the same reason, corresponding. Note that we have... I'll get rid of that. Note that we have um, two angles that we're proving here. So I'm going to put A and A. Now we have AED is similar to something, okay? And based on what type of, well, it's gonna be angle, angle, because that's all we have. We have angle, angle, and that's it. But what type of similarity is it gonna be? AED, well, we need to identify where AD is, AED. AED is going in that direction, and we need to duplicate that direction for the big triangle. So ACB, triangle ACB is the big one. We have to do it in the same order. And then that's going to be congruent, no, similar, sorry, similar to triangle AED. If you wrote ABC, that's a different triangle. It has to go in the same order because it, those angles are in reference to each other. Those angles need to be the same. So angle A needs to be the same as, what did I say for that one? AED, ACB. So ACB is what I'm looking for, ACB. Because A needs to be congruent to A. A needs to be congruent to A, E needs to be congruent to C, and B needs to be congruent to D in that order, okay? So that's why that's the way it is. And I think that's all it's asking. Part A, check it. Next question. Last one. Actually, not too bad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> in the following triangle, point E is the midpoint of A, B, and point D is the midpoint of A, C. Just a critique for maybe Khan Academy creators. It's a little confusing just because we're jumping around all over the place. I get what you guys are trying to do. Um, but maybe just have, like, break this up into a couple kind of... Okay, anyway, they're probably not watching this video anyway. In the following triangle, point E is the midpoint of AB, and point D is the midpoint of AC. Okay, and you can tell that because it's got these lines right there. Okay, those lines indicate midpoint, so that's a midpoint, that's a midpoint. Below is the proof that DE equals one half of CB. That's another theorem. It's actually a pretty useful one. This green line is half of this purple line, okay? So that green is half the length, which is kind of cool. Um, so you multiply CB times one half in order to get DE. Sometimes that's a little confusing for people. The proof is divided into four parts. We only want to worry about part D, okay? So CB over DE equals blank, okay? So we knew that CB is the long side and DE. So we know that's two to one, right? But it's looking for proportion. So CB over D to E is equal to, what are our options? Boy, I wish I, let me jot down. So we have CB. So one of our triangles is this. I'm just going to write it down because I don't want to go back and forth. So we have, this is the big triangle. We have A, B, C. I swear I'm not this bad at drawing. And then we have A, E, D. Okay, in that order. Make sure that you keep that order the same. So I'm going to scroll down here. Now I can look at it easier. I'm going to erase this. Okay, so then it says CB, that's this line, over DE, that's the bottom side, is going to be proportionate to what? What are our choices? We have CD over DA. CD over DA. CD, okay, so CD is a different portion than DA is. CD. CB over DE. We're looking at the whole side. So that's not going to work, okay? We want like CA over AB. So we have CA over DA, CA over DA. That's going to be the one, okay? So our second one is it. How do I know? Because it it's this whole length of the side there, and it's ho this whole length of the side there. Notice how I don't see CD in this triangle. So I know the top one's out. 
CA over CD. There's no C in this second triangle, so this option's out, so it's CA over DA. CA over DA. Then we have CB over DE is equal to substitution. So we're going to substitute part A12. Well, I don't even have part A in there. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Maybe I got to look up. I got to show this up. CA over DA equals 2. So hold on. I got to scroll down here. CA over DA equals 2. So I looked up at my part A, and it said, let me erase this. It said that this, CA over DA, is equal to 2. So I'm just going to put this is equal to 2 from using substitution. And then 1 half CB equals DE. Multiply both sides of the equation by, how do I do this? So I would multiply both sides by DE, or probably 1 half. I need to get to 1 half. And I multiply, I think that's going to do it. So well, how does this work? Okay, if you have 1 half CB equals DE. Oh, sorry, I had this. I started here. CB over DE equals 2. And if I multiply by DE over 2, I have to multiply that to both sides. Sorry about that. Okay, and what happens is this cancels out. These cancel out. And I'm left with CB over 2 equals DE, which is the same thing as 1 half that okay so d over two and there we go finally that is it okay that's a tough one thank you for requesting that video uh so i hope that helped a lot of people out there trying to learn about geometry and proofs it can be very challenging i have a lot of videos that are non khan academy related if you ever want to search those up you can type in proof or um i can't remember it's been a while since i even had them but just go look at my geometry notes i have a lot of note sections in there for the pearson book and if you need another video, leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer it. Either way, I look forward to seeing you right here next time on West Explains Best.